Vicky's Smiley Morning Show, the most funny in the morning. morning. It's the Ricky Smiley Morning Show. Just another day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Ladies and gentlemen, the senior pastor of Friendship West Missionary Baptist Church, Dallas, Texas, Pastor Frederick Douglas Haynes. Pastor Haynes, good morning. Hey, good morning, Ricky Smiley and the Ricky Smiley Morning Show. I pray y'all having a great day. You know, I love you, Ricky Smiley. I'm so proud of you, and I thank God for you. Listen, today's song is that song by Kareen Hawthorne entitled, Won't He Do It? I like that. Won't He Do It? Let's you know that when you find yourself in an insufferable situation and you don't know how you are going to do it, the good news is God will do it. God will will do what you can't do. God will, watch this, make a way when there appears to be no way. God will do it, and simply all we got to say is, won't he do it? Won't he do it? I guess I'll leave, I'll give you this, Ricky, and that is when we say, won't he do it, we're basically saying that God is a come-through God. When I'm going through God has a way of coming through. And when God comes through, God does for me what I can't handle myself. When I'm going through, God holds me together when everything in my world is falling apart. When I'm going through, God handles my haters and uses them as both motivators and elevators. So I rise when they try to tear me down. Won't he do it? Won't do it is the word of the day so when you get down just remember the words won't he do it and when you get down and you feel like you can't get back up I got a word for you won't he do it he will pick you up won't he do it he will turn things around won't he do it God will come through while you are going through won't he do it? There it is, Pastor Haynes, man, the senior pastor of Christian West Missionary Baptist Church. Let's get into this music. Love you, Pastor Haynes. Yes, sir. Love you, Ricky. Have a great one. Yes, sir. You too. Let's go. News headlines. Entertainment. Sports. It's the front page on the Ricky Smiley Morning Show. All right, 13 minutes after the hour, y'all got your front page right here. Maria, good morning. Good morning, Ricky. Good morning, RSMS family. Here's what's happening in news. Politics and race are both factors in a pending court challenge of Louisiana's new congressional maps. The issue is a congressional map that was approved this year with the backing of the state's new governor, Jeff Landry, who happens to be a Republican. Now, the map creates a mostly black congressional district in Louisiana at the expense of a white Republican incumbent, Representative Garrett Graves, who backed another Republican in the governor's election last fall. So it seems like the current governor is doing this as payback. Now, given voting patterns in Louisiana, a mostly black district would be more likely to send a Democrat to Congress. In other news, Kraft Heinz is facing a class action lawsuit with claims their Lunchables are basically a scrap yard of metals that end up in the mouths of kids everywhere. In the documents. Done with that? <laughs> I got plenty of them. Yeah, I yeah. eat them as a grown person. Yeah, I'd be tearing them little crackers and cheese up no more. Well, yeah, you better um, think again because in documents obtained by TMZ, Laura Lespizzi accuses Kraft of misleading consumers with false advertising about their prepackaged meal uh, kits. She claims that they failed to mention the kits contain harmful levels of lead. Um, <laughs> In their prepackaged meal ki- uh, kits, uh, mm-hmm. cadmium and other chemicals typically used to make plastic more durable. Mm-hmm. I should have been dead. Yeah, if that's the case. Yeah, I done ate I'm so a, many lunch. I done wore them little cookies out. The I chocolate them cookies, get on the, plane. The, the white cookies, the the, the what other cheese, desserts? The, the little yeah. cheese and crackers, and the little pizza turkey ones. and cheese, yeah. and the ham and cheese, and the man. Little, uh, the little the little butterfinger be in there, man. Mm-hmm. I done wore that's it. gonna kill you. I'm, I'm just gonna have to keep risking my life. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I'll, show, I'll show you how to make them. You know you can make them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't know. Should there be an age cut off for Lunchables? Mm-mm. Of course not. Okay. I was just <laughs> wondering. Nobody like making no damn sandwich. Everybody oh. likes snacks. Okay. Yeah. All on, right. On, so y'all, okay. All right. Well, this last story I have here is a new survey. Uh, survey found that one in five recently American married Americans confess they nearly skipped out on their own weddings. Yeah, a poll of 2,000 Americans who married between 2021 and 2024 finds that 20% got cold feet before their big day and nearly called off the whole 
thing. I know that hasn't happened to anyone here on this morning show. I'm Maria Moore, and that's what's happening in news. For updates and more headlines, visit rickysmileymorningshow.com. Rock T, what you got in sports? All right, Toronto Raptor Jonte Porter has just been banned from the NBA for life. Oh, yeah, I saw that. Betting on his own team to lose, but also manipulated his play to tip the scale in his favor. Is he a starter? Uh, yeah, man, he uh shooting air balls on purpose. I mean, wow. coming out the game saying he's sick, saying he's injured, stuff like that. Other people letting other people know that placed this particular bet because I'm gonna help make my team lose, and you're gonna if you spend eighty thousand dollars on this particular bet, you can win one million dollars. Give me my Do cut. You know type people stuff. wish they could be in the NBA. He's twenty four, dog. Done. Yeah, twenty four. He threw his career away for that. For that. At twenty four. Come on, dog. Come on. It is what it is, man. NBA play-in tournament continued in the Eastern Conference. Philadelphia beat Miami, the 76ers. They sealed the seventh seed and will face the New York Knicks in the first round of the playoffs. Jimmy Butler suffered a right knee injury, uh, so he's probably done. Uh, the, the Chicago Bulls blew out the Hawks, Atlanta Hawks. The Bulls will play the Miami Heat for the eighth and final playoff spot in the Eastern Conference. Quick sports support right there. Brett, what you got coming up next? Coming up next in the hot spot, Kanye West is named as a battery suspect. Who up next on the Ricky Smiley Morning Show? The hot spot. Drop it like it's hot. hot. Drop it like it's hot. So hot and this hot. You can catch me at the hot spot. It's the B R A T. All right, Ricky Smiley Morning Show. And listen, y'all, rooms are selling out fast for my birthday beach blowout in Hollywood, Florida. So make sure you call your friends and log on to rickysmileybbb.com to reserve your room today. What up, Brett? What up, Ricky? Good morning, everybody. I'm your girl, Brad Tat Tat, and this is the hot spot where we bring you music, movies, and more. So let's get off into it. Time Magazine released its annual list of the 100 most influential people in the world. Some of the artists include 21 Savage, Coleman Domingo, Fantasia Barino, and Leslie Odom Jr. Other icons like Taraji P. Henson, Michael J. Fox, business shark Mark Cuban, and California Governor Gavin Newsom uh, all made the list. So congratulations to them uh, for being the most influential people. Meanwhile, y'all, LAPD want to talk to Kanye West regarding the battery incident that went down on Tuesday night. Now, police were told that Ye punched a stranger in the face after the man allegedly pushed or grabbed his wife, Bianca Sensory. Now, his team said that Bianca was sexually assaulted by the random man who put his hands under her dress, grabbed her waist, and blew her kisses. In retaliation, Kanye punched him. Now, how the hell do something happen like that when you got security all around you? Somebody can get up that close to you and put their hand uh, under yeah, your that, lip. That's a that lot. fast? Uh, pose as security or something or, or, or make yourself seem like you one of the promoters or but, pa- like. But like, to reach under somebody. Kanye is, usually is walking with security and plenty of people. That's crazy. But, but anyway, uh, him and Bianca left after the altercation. And the alleged victim I'm didn't need... I'm glad he punched tre- him in the face. I'm glad he did, too. But the, the victim didn't need treatment, so he wasn't hurt that bad. He wasn't injured at all. Uh, police and, plan and on reaching... should sue him before yeah. he run and get a lawyer. Go sue him. Yeah. Police plan on reaching out to Kanye for his side of the story, and we'll also speak to witnesses. All right, moving on. Footage is circulating, y'all, on social media in recent days that show Nelly performing to a near-empty arena. Now, students at the University of Florida were given the chance to attend a free show. However, they did not take the opportunity to go. Videos taken uh, from the seats on the side of the arena show a small crowd standing near the stage for Nelly set before the camera pans to the show to show the rest of the arena that is virtually empty. Now, the performance was originally slated to kick off at 7 p.m., but was pushed back an hour in the hopes that more people would attend and make their way through the doors. But that ended up not being the case. And concert goers who previously uh, nabbed physical seats were invited to make their way to the floor before he took the stage. Uh, many have spoken up to defend <laughs> Nelly, with plenty of fans suggesting we, we, that the video <laughs> must have been taken during a pre-show we sound check We can tell you about a lot of something. nights like that, me and Special K. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Everybody come out the bleachers, y'all. Come on to the front. Let's get this front full. <laughs> give it up uh, Give it up for the ladies. <laughs> <laughs> we done had some nights like yeah. that. 
I think a lot of times, Ricky, the promoters, the, it, that has something to do with the promotion that they don't promote the. Because you can't tell me the all these. Co- I know you can't tell me all these college students they going to want to see Nelly. Come on now. Yeah, they in their rooms being weird, entitled, uh, uh, get everything for free anyway, looking in them phones and don't know how to go out and have a good time. That's all it is. I think Nelly did a, a, a good thing by still continuing to do the show because he was probably paid and he went on and just fulfilled his, you know, you know his duties wanted, and did what he had to do. Yeah, the college kid want to see something ratchet. Yep. Yeah, well, that, they that, they, they, they want to see sexy red. That's yeah. fine because he could have easily turned around and been like, I'm not doing this, but he went on and did what he had to do. So Yeah, go out there for about 10 minutes and do your hits mm-hmm. and, and come on off the stage. Uh, okay. And just make, make it a rehearsal. Okay, a sound that. check. Yeah, get that check. Mate, <laughs> okay. They, they pay them universities, pay that check. They coming. sure do, don't they? I bet that check was in that yes, bank. Sir. I bet you he got it already. Damn, like Bernie <laughs> Mac said, damn them kids. You liar. I believe him, yo. I don't know why, but I do. All right, y'all, uh, 14 before the top of the hour, y'all, Rick's Mountain Morning Show. What up, Special K? What up, Rick? So, uh, you know, we just got a new member to the uh, Half a Dollar Club. Okay. And uh, that's a beautiful thing. You know what I'm saying? Welcome, Brett. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome, welcome to welcome to the half a dollar. The half a dollar club. I was on your I, boy, I was on your Instagram this morning and I saw those uh man Judy mm-hmm. said it out. You Come on. Know now. It. You already know. Man, yeah, start a new that. IG page just for your gifts, didn't you? <laughs> right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that that is a good idea. You couldn't even fit them all on your have so-so brat. <laughs> hey. Man, I thought of Brat's gifts page. Brad, let me work, Brad, give me one of them old necklaces. I got you. Yes, sir. <laughs> just give me a charm off one of them old Please. necklaces. Please. Oh, Jesus. You. Take one necklace, just break it up and get all of us a piece. <laughs> <laughs> you stupid. <laughs> oh, man. So, look. Um, Talking you know, to Mike there. So, sir. people be getting Thank stressed you. out about, you know, hitting that hitting that 5-0, man. But it's really not a bad thing because, you know, things change and you become – you're at a different stage in life. You're not old. You're a young senior citizen. That's what you are. You're a young. Man, don't say that. You're an infant in the senior citizen stage. Yeah, but I don't like that Come senior on, citizen. Come on, man. Don't put that You're on. a young senior citizen. That's what I am. All right. Now, in your 50s, <laughs> you should be at a point where you proudly purchase major household appliances. That's when you know. <laughs> let, let me tell you how you know you're a grown man. When you buy four tires at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> When you buy four new tires yeah. you at the only same get one. time, you use the when you're only young, get one, you, you get one. Maybe two used ones. Maybe two used you ones. You put the two new ones on the front. <laughs> but boy, when you... And, 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 that's and, right, Rock. Yes, sir. Rock, there's never a prouder moment than when you walk in that Firestone a good year and slap that car down on the counter like a spades hand. Come on, dog. Come on, man. Give me all yeah. four of them. Because we were... We, Mounted we and balanced, baby. Are, this is this is the realest segment we have ever Come done on, on this now. show. You ain't told one lie that's yet. You, boy, that's so much pride in that. And when you buy your first deep freezer. <laughs> Come on, man. Come on, man. You realize they ain't but like two or three hundred dollars. When you buy a washer dryer set, <laughs> the front well, loader. The front loader. If you ain't never bought a refrigerator and had that thing delivered, <laughs> when you standing at that counter at Home Depot and giving them your address, <laughs> Come on, God. and saying, "Yeah, this is where y'all gonna drop this thing off." Come yeah, on, like, man. Gary, you don't recognize? No, he he bought Come no, on, man. No, not yet. But I'ma get there. Come on, man. <laughs> when you get an oil change, you can afford to get that synthetic. Yeah, dog. And you oh, better man. replace the air filter. Yes, sir. Because, you know, when you're in your 20s, they, they say you need a, you know you need an air filter. No, 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 no. I ain't going to do that. I ain't going to do that. you got them bad windshield wipers. Come on, man. <laughs> yeah, they say, hey, man, you need to replace your wiper blades. Now, boy, well, you can let them do all that extra. Come on, dog. Come on now. And that's the other thing. When you get in your 50s, you ain't dealing with overdraft fees no more. You should not be dealing with overdraft. You should never be all the way broke in your 50s. Right. Oh. Like, how are you 53 and you ain't got a dollar to your name? Right. How yeah. did that happen? You got all that stuff and you don't want to share it with nobody. Come on, man. I don't Come on, I'm man. Put that on my deep freezer. And you shouldn't be getting your cell phone cut off. You should never be getting your cell phone uh, cut uh, off. Uh, uh, don't sit on my deep freezer. <laughs> <laughs> you don't worry about getting in freezer. club fights no more. Oh no, that's first not an all, issue. First of all, we ain't going to the club. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. Nah, we'll, we'll go to a day. We'll go to a day party, man. And we'll go see Frank and Beverly and Mays. But after uh-uh. that, we're going home. Let me tell you something. In your twenties and thirties, you going out to the club? You leaving house at eleven o'clock? We told you Street Street up back in the day. In your fifties, you going to clubs that close at ten thirty? <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> You're not leaving out the house. You go to an event that's in a ballroom in a hotel or yeah. gala, right? <laughs> and then you sleep after after you get through eating. <laughs> Let me tell you something. In your, let me see. Oh yeah, the uh, fights. You don't fight at all in your fifties, uh-uh. you unless you Mike a, Tyson. You, get you don't a fight in your fifties. Like if, if, if me and you got to fight, we'll lock up. Yeah, and we'll hope that Super Dave or Rock T 
and say, hey, 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 oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, don't do that. You don't want to fight don't in your that. 50s. And your arms get stiff and your yeah. glasses be twisted up. Yes, sir. Let everybody know you mean business, yeah. but you ain't finna throw hands. Uh-uh. Because a fight in your 50s might be the now, last hey, thing uh, you do. Uh, 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 <laughs> hey, hey, don't do that. Don't do that. Uh-uh, y'all, uh-uh, y'all. Yeah, that's all, that's all you're going to do. You yeah. get punched in your chest at 25, you can laugh it off at the barbershop. You get punched in your chest at 50, Ain't gonna happen. you yeah. might find out you had a heart condition for the last eight years. <laughs> you ain't know nothing about <laughs> as you're laying there taking your last breath yeah. on that sidewalk. <laughs> and uh, finally, for, for the fellas, I'm going to say this. In your 20s, you get up hard. Up. In your 50s, it's hard getting up. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, hold on, hold on, hold on, stop, 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 hold on, hold on, uh, uh, Special K. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> this is from Shari to the morning show. Oh, okay. <laughs> the hell? Clean it. The like a little itch in the throat. <laughs> I don't think that was her. Uh, I don't think that was her. <laughs> Don't think that was her. (laughs) (laughs) Sound like a farm animal. Especially because your wife said good morning. (laughs) I would have been divorced. (laughs) Man, half woman. It's Gary. I want to hip you to the Mm teeth. It's Gary, baby. Hey, you be listening to a song like that, and a chick with allergies, and she'll ruin the whole vibe. He said, best you ever. <laughs> Remix. Take that like a that. barnyard animal. <laughs> Boy, what in the full-grown sheep <laughs> hell is going on right now? <laughs> what in the full-grown donkey hell is happening right now? I got a full-grown mule. <laughs> what up? You know, somebody put a baby cow in the bed next to <laughs> Hell is going on? If you don't get up Cut and them if off. you don't get up and sign oh. these divorce papers. Oh wow! <laughs> Go ahead, you Gary. gotta leave your mate after that. G- Gary. Good morning, Gary. Maria. Good, good morning, Maria. Good morning, Ricky. Good morning, America. Good morning to you. It's Thursday, a beautiful day in the neighborhood, and here's what's happening in celebrity news, y'all. Dancing with the star, star Michelle Burke, baby. This girl is. Finally speaking out. I've been saying this since she's been dancing, and now she's talking, honey. She's revealing y'all that um, she was with three of her dancers. She said she had showmances. Now, they're saying y'all that Shelburne is clearing the air about her and her romance rumors with the past dancer with the star's partner. Now, the pro dancer who departed the um, dance competition series in 2022 after 26 seasons, y'all addressed the headlines that have long followed her about her romantic history, y'all, with her celebrity partners, y'all. Now, they're saying she had at least three to be exact. She said one of which was the former football player and season 10 contestant Chad Ocho Cinco oh, Johnson. My God. I knew she was sleeping with them damn men. I don't care what no, I've said You've been that. Saying that, that for years. Yes. Saying that I've been saying for years. Yes. I knew this because, honey, you put a black I, I man tell. with you put a black man with a white woman, honey. That's it. That, a white woman is a black man's crib tonight. <laughs> Gary. And, honey, and she dancing with him, hell, and I knew she was um Gary, allegedly. They, and they be dancing real close. Very too. close. It's That's very right. Intimate. She like, said it's an intimate probably, contact that's sport. That's why they won the chemistry. Yeah. You have to develop, have to make love uh-uh. to develop good chemistry. Yeah, There's yeah, no Gary. chemistry in my butt, honey. These people got um wives, honey, and stuff like that. What? They say her nickname was Finish Line because everybody ran through her. Damn. Oh, my God. Well, I tell you what, honey. I knew she was doing something, honey. And I got wow. a list of the men that she was dancing with. Now, I'm not saying she was with these men, but these are the lists, honey. She danced with Emmy Smith. She danced with um Rick Fox. Rick Fox got a divorce from his wife. Emmy Smith got a divorce from his wife. D.L. Hughley, Terrell Owens, Ray Lewis, and um, um, Maurice Green. That's some of the black men that she danced with, honey. And I knew every time it was time for her to dance, they put up with a black man for the most be, part. They be throwing their leg all up yes. by their neck oh, and yeah, stuff. Yeah. 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 I knew it. Dancing with the stars. I knew it. Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> but I, throw that leg up here. I knew it was something to that, honey. Something. <laughs> and now it's being confessed, y'all. But this is the sad thing about it, though, y'all. Now, you know, honey, she um, was married, honey. She met her um, future husband, Matthew Lawrence. Now, y'all know who Matthew Lawrence is. He's the guy now who's dating Chili. And, honey, she and Matthew Lawrence were together, honey. For, um, um, they split back in 2008 after a year of dating. But they reconnected back in 2017. Um, and then the two got married in May of 2019. And they divorced in 2022. She yeah, probably traumatized. self-conscious about getting married. Mm. Yeah, well... Oh. 
Please. Tell the truth and shame the devil. She traumatized that poor man. He had to go get him a black woman because she had all them black men. Oh, so, sure honey. Works. Yeah, so Michelle Burke was too many things, but I knew she it. She was a doorknob. I, yeah, well, she was something, honey, but I tell you, yeah, I, I feel so bad. Oh, Gary, you came out the gate with the hot tea this yeah, morning. Yeah, because I was on, upset Gary. that I knew that woman was probably messing with these you damn men. You vindicated. But, yes, I am. Yeah, and a lot of them dancers dance really close together. They like, were very so close. you can't tell me they don't get, like, turned on Let and they start, start the dating and stuff. I need to they go do. on now. I need to go they on now. They do. They, yeah. get, they all get hot and bothered the one eye time or another. Too. That's a big thing. It's the eye yeah. contact. They be face to face. They bodies be intertwined. Let's like, go. They be rubbing up against that each other. Yeah. The gyrating. They yeah. gotta control their hips. It's I just want a very it all. Hips, sexual. Gyrating, all of it. <laughs> oh Lord, Ricky. All of it. Well, you can have it because she, I don't know if she back on it, but I ain't got nobody else to replace her probably. But yeah. I knew it was something going on with this woman, she honey. She's going to probably be back because she didn't tell it now. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah she t- and she said Ocho Cinco gave her an enormous diamond ring. Hey. I said, oh, he did, but he the main one out in the public talking about black women need to learn how to save money, how he wanted to do his woman nails and hands. So that's a typical black man want to cut a black woman Ooh, from um, spending money. What? How is it his fault? Is well, How is it his fault for what? That she a bicycle. <laughs> What is he talking about? Everybody I get the ride. I haven't known. And then, the then she wake up doing this right here. Hey, <laughs> Cheryl. <laughs> okay, I'm the Lord of the day. What? Uh, all that. Uh, she looking good on. She looking good on Dancing with the Stars. Mm. She look mm-hmm. at you in your eyes, gyrating her hips. You go on tear that thing up, and then you got to wake up to this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> well, that's what y'all like. The color of the day, y'all, Ooh. is forensic. On the high end, you Ooh. say forensic, and the low end, just say beautiful red. That's your color for the day. Boy, I got a headache this morning, man. <laughs> This same is being brought to you by the birthday beach blowout in Hollywood, Florida. Make sure, listen, you call all your friends and log on to rickysmileybbb.com. rickysmileybbb.com to reserve your room today. Y'all give it up for Gary with the T. All right, y'all, Rick's about the morning show. I got your wake up call. Get at me, 8669. Ricky, here we go. Here we go. This is Mark from Brentwood, Long Island, waking up my sister, Bozy Nada. Wake up! Hey, this is Felicia Kane and Samuel Austin. We want to wake up Tron Austin, Patricia Austin, Kylie Johnson, and all the inmates at Warren County. Wake up, wake up, wake up! Greg from Miami 305. I want to wake up Black Tony. Wake up, wake up, wake up! Good morning, this is Kenny from Raleigh. I want to call and wake up my nephew Samarius at North Carolina a t University in Greensboro. Wake up, wake up, wake up! Come on! To be brought to you by. Brought to you by Black Girl Sunscreen. Black Girl Sunscreen is excited to join the Tom Joyner Fantastic Voyage as a first-time sponsor. Stay moisturized and protect your skin with sunscreen created for us by us. All right, now, Ricky, you could attest to this. I've been telling y'all this story for years, years, years. Now, a study done by a urological surgeon at Alexandria Hospital said the proper way, y'all, listen to this. <clears throat> The proper way for men to empty their bladders is to sit down when they urinate. I've been telling y'all this. Man. Rick, but you, 
No, I've been saying this for years. <laughs> now, listen up. The study found out that only 10% of men in the U.S. sit down when they urinate. Now, compared to 60% of men in Germany. Now, he said that doing um, number one in the sitting position, y'all, is the proper way for men to empty their bladders. Now, Dr. Collins also said, y'all, that some of the health issues that can arise from not emptying your bladder include urinary tract infections, bladder stones, and kidney infections. So, Ricky, Special K, Croc T. So, sitting down, y'all, would y'all sit down every time now, no. y'all, when y'all go to the restroom? No, mm-hmm. sir. Ain't going to be a dick. Y'all so stupid. I actually can't. <laughs> I, I wish I could, but I can't. You can't? I can't. Mm-hmm. Why can't you? Well, I, being I, like I, everybody I, else's. My private ain't finna touch the water. <laughs> That's just a lot to do, man, just to go number one. <laughs> and I ain't know how far that. down that hole go. Yeah. <laughs> can't have this down in the water, and I got one of them long toilets with the water real low. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Taylor, don't laugh at that. Hey, but, Taylor, be quiet. Hey, y'all don't do that. I'm still, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Put a fishing lure on yeah. it. Nah. <laughs> oh, love. But, Ricky, but it's, I'm telling you, I've been telling no, no, you yeah, yeah, since I've been on did. the show. Yeah, but, Gary, ain't nobody finna be sitting down on the toilet. It's relaxing. Look how it empties your bladder. I mean, it's it's just, it's yeah, soothing. Yeah, it just don't feel, right. it, it don't. don't feel right. It don't. It don't feel right. It don't. Well, you don't, you gotta first try it to see if it feel right. I mean, I don't. I, Gary, you yeah. take you take all that time to, you know, get your pants unbuckled and you put them down to your ankle, you sit down yeah. and you pee for 30 seconds. Now you gotta get all, get right back up. It's yeah, just well, something that's whip it out and just stand enjoyable up. about standing mm. there and, and just doing it like a, like a uh, man. man. Grown no, ass man. Something no, it is. Very, to me, it's very um, demeaning. It's tacky. One time you went, I think, I think, I think uh, uh, one, uh, one day you was in there, you had to stand up. One yeah, day. Yeah. And I never did it again. I laughed my ass. When I walked in there. Because <laughs> he had a tear running it, down his face. I saw you standing at that stall. Oh, and, the way your, and the way your body was arched. You don't, you don't, know, how to, don't know how to stand up there and pee like a man. And you was arched a certain way <laughs> and uncomfortable. I'm like, Gary, take, take one of your, have one of his foot up on the wall. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> Ricky, it is so demeaning. You know, Gary, y'all I know laughed so hard. I was out. It was a man law violation. I had to walk out. And that's why I was so humiliated. But I'm never doing that again because I, I just think it's tacky. It's a, um, a, a, a facility here where you could go to a concert. And special case, you know about it. It's like oh, a yeah. damn trough. Yeah, Ricky they have like a trough. trough. They have a one trough. of those trough yes. uh, urinals in the men's room. A uh, urinal like a damn it's trough. A long metal trough. Yeah, like where back in the day at them stadiums. Yes. Them stadiums. Yeah, they still have those in yeah. um, certain places. They remind me of a slave or something. I refuse, honey. I just refuse. And I think it's just. It, it is interesting because men don't get the privacy that women get. You no, know? yeah. You get your little space. Mm-mm. And I wouldn't dare stand up there in a urinal, honey, with that little petition thing. People well, be looking over and stuff. You no. Need to go get you some depends. How about that? Exactly. That's what I need, honey. I was in them once. <laughs> oh, <laughs> get back in the. Hey, Jay. Hey, hey, like, hey, Black Tony. Girl, I want you to know. Same with me, Black Tony. I'm not, I'm not saying that song. I'm, I'm, I'm doing song. I'm doing song good right now for, for these church. What? I'm doing song good for these church. That's why. That's why I'm in at work. <sighs> my, uh, man, hey man, my partner, man, my partner went on. I ain't gonna say he raw. He he didn't raw the library, but he got some library books. Cause I had to man, what you my, crying for, man? Because I had to keep my nep- I had to keep my my other little nephew, not the not the bad ones, but the little ones. I got I got two little little nephews. Yeah. That I had to keep this yeah. one until they till they mama get back from the food stand off, and I was reading them some books. And I, said, I ain't never you ever heard of Doctor Swiss? Doctor Seuss, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <a> Swiss. <laughs> yeah. It's it's S E U S S Doctor Sweet Doctor Swiss. Shout he got some books out. Yeah, I, ain't never read, I ain't never read these kind of books, y'all. Yeah. You know about the cat in the hat? Yeah. How the Grinch stole crumb. The what? The how the, how the Grinch stole crumb. Yeah. Red fish, listen, one fish, two fish, red fish, blue fish. Yes, sir. Horn here's horn here, horn who? Hop on, hop on pop. All of them. Foot book. <laughs> the walk it in my pocket. Bro, you ever heard of walk it in my pocket? Yes, no, sir. go ahead, go ahead. But look here, y'all. Yeah. I started reading that book uh, to the to to, to the children. Right. This morning, uh, Green Eggs and Ham. You ever heard of that book, Rock? Yeah. Yes, sir. Man, so well, what got you in your feelings, book. man? What what is something got you in your feelings? 
It just Shouty, it's just like it's like a rapper. He like a rapper. Shouty, he, he rhyme everything, and it, and it just the kids were so they were so excited when I started reading. Yeah, and and it just made me feel good because ain't nobody never read it to them before. But what what part got you feeling good, Black Tom? It's like, do you like green eggs and ham? I do not like green eggs and ham. They said, would you like them in a house? Would you like them with a mouse? I do not like them in a house. I do not like them with a mouse. Would you eat them in a box? Would you eat them with a box? Would you, could you, in a car? Eat them, eat them. Here they are. I would not, could not, in a car. You may like them, you will see. You may like them in a tree. I would not, could not, in a tree. <laughs> not in the car. You let me be. I do not like them in a box. I do not like them with a box. I do not like them in a house. I do not like them with a mouth. I like them here or there. I do not like them anywhere. I do not like green eggs as hell. You crying over green eggs. I am black. I do like them. Sam, I am. Because he didn't want to eat the green eggs. <laughs> he was trying to tell him he did not want to eat the green eggs. And he kept trying to get on to eat the green eggs. Hey, but what what all this got to do with you not coming to work? I'm too in my feelings. I'm too emotional right now. (laughs) Two, three. Welcome to Dollar Tree. Welcome to Dollar Tree. Everything is a dollar twenty-five. And don't forget to go down at Christmas out. And we also got that three, four, five dollar out. We want to thank y'all for shopping with us at Dollar Tree. And the, the Dollar Tree whole staff love you. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. Hold it. He's half man, half woman. It's Gary. Hip you to the T. It's Gary, baby. Gary has a T in the Kahlua of the day, man. Listen, man, getting ready, man, for the Rick Smiley Birthday Beach blowout August the 9th through the 11th in Hollywood, Florida. Listen, y'all, you can fly into Miami International Airport or Fort Lauderdale Airport. Listen, at the Diplomat Beach Resort, four diamond rated by AAA, relaxation, celebration, inspiration, live music, pool parties, barbecue, Greek festivities. Why can't I have a Gary? Uh-huh. Every it's day, festivity, best, best, festivities. Yeah. I don't know. I break it down in syllables. It festivities, three yeah, syllables. Festivities, festivities, <laughs> Greek festivities, and much more. Oh, let, let me stop. I want to mispronounce that. I want the, the cues to get mad and start oh, dragging yeah. you on the internet. Oh, for, yeah. Uh, don't get me started on that. Uh, anyway, m- make sure y'all go to Rick's. <laughs> Just stay on the birthday bag. Yeah, 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 I get. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't, don't. Mm-hmm. The bruh. Yeah, the birthday bag. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The bruh. Birthday say, bag. The bruh said you can't read. August 9th okay. through 11th. It's going down, baby. <laughs> Tell a bruh you can cash your Ricky check. RickySmileyBBB.com. <laughs> Get That's there. cat. You mispronounced the word. That's cat. You may see some That's cats awesome. on that at the birthday party. <laughs> yes. And what some up, tea. <laughs> what up, Gary? Good morning, Ricky. Good morning, America. Good morning to you. It's Thursday. A beautiful, beautiful day in the neighborhood. And here's what's happening in celebrity news, y'all. Congratulations is due, y'all. Ashante announced that she and Nelly are engaged and Woo! are expecting their first child together. Yes, yeah, yeah. She shared the pregnancy news on Instagram where she played a video, y'all, of her mother asking asking her if she was ready to perform on stage. Well, Shantae replied, I'm going to need about nine months and showed the positive pregnancy test, y'all. She ended the video, y'all, with the phrase, to be continued. Now, here's the deal. Nelly has two children with his ex-wife, Miss Shanetta Valentine, and he adopted, y'all, his sister's two children when she passed away in 2005, y'all. So, congratulations goes out to Shantae and Nelly. You know? That's beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, Lord. It's like she waited um, to, you know, finally get pregnant when she got with um, other people and he got Love with other people. Love keep and us together. Captain together. and Tennille. Exactly. And Reunited and it feels so good. Mm-hmm. Peaches and her. Yep, yeah. they're playing all those old songs, honey. Well, speaking of feeling so good they ain't keeping together, Jeezy, y'all, is clearing the air on his beard, honey, for primary custody of his kids. Now asking the judge, y'all, to make sure 
that he and Miss Jenny Mae Honey each get their fair share of parental time. Right. Now, in a new motion, honey, obtained by TMZ, Jeezy claims, y'all, that his estranged wife, y'all, is restricting his access to their daughter, two-year-old little Monica. Now, the rapper says, y'all, that he and Jeannie worked out an informal custody agreement last year, but that fell apart, honey, at the beginning of 2024, and he claims, y'all, that he barely even seen Monaco this whole year. Oh, my God. Bless his soul, honey. But um, they say Jesus said that they agreed, honey, that, that said they agreed to let him take Monaco for spring break from March the 3rd to March the 9th. But when he um sent someone to pick his daughter up for another visit at the beginning of April, baby, she wasn't at the home, and Miss Jeannie wasn't there. Yeah, How did that game. happen, y'all? Yeah, that's uh, what that's what a lot of them do. They play those games when they get mad at you, and then they try to weaponize the child against you or whatever. But they don't understand you hurting the child, but not letting the child have a relationship with the father. Yeah, and it's wrong. And a lot yep. of, and a lot of folks do that. Play those right. games like that with kids and stuff. If you care, man, put your feelings aside and always do what's in the best interest of the child. And that's just what she needs to do. And honey, if Jenny, if you're listening, girl, do it because Jeezy is a great person. You honey. didn't but show up on time. You was one yeah. minute late. Well, you supposed to come this day. Well, she's sick. She don't feel good. Tell that bee to stay out my baby head. All that. She got ringworm. Da, 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 da. On and on and on and, and the on. the man trying to be a father. Right. Well, and the man is going to be a father. But let me tell y'all something, honey. Moving on. Beyonce, baby. I hear about Beyonce. They say, baby, she's a Gamecock fan, honey. Now, they say, honey, she sent Dawn Staley out some beautiful roses and flowers, honey, and she sent her a T-shirt. And, you know, she's saying that, you know, Beyonce sent out a video thanking the woman or whatever. She said Staley was seated beside the large bouquet of flowers and pointed to the T-shirt, y'all, that she was sitting on a table, y'all. So congratulations to Beyonce. But some flowers? Yeah, send her some flowers. It was it was mm. it was symbolic as well really as sweet. you know a nice gift. I'm giving you your flowers because of what though? I'm giving you your flowers because, because Gail King disrespected her. Sure did when she talked about on live TV talking about how we was we were all pulling for Iowa and Caitlin Clark. We was not. Who the hell is we? Yeah, Gail? who you talking about? Mm-hmm. Read yeah. the room, Gail. Yeah. Well, she um, she said, "I'm so proud of you, all my love, Beyonce." Closed in the letter, y'all. So I guess congratulations to her, honey. Because you and know she did that again. Why? Yeah, because Gail King was disrespectful and did not oh, give her her flowers. So Beyonce said, I'm going to give you your flowers literally. As she should. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think Gail King and Oprah have something common, honey, with black women. Yeah, they don't connect. Yeah, that's what oh. I'm kind of saying. Like, I don't want to say that because we love Oprah. We wanted to come on the show. Who was we? But, oh. <laughs> I, would, I, would, I don't mind having Oprah on the show at all. I just have an issue. Uh, uh, but like, like, why would Gail King go in there and say that we put them? Why? why that we who are you talking yeah, about? Like, like what? That's a like weird we, thing. That's a weird yeah, take. We, to of have. course, we pull up a Don State. That's a she's weird. A, she's take a legend to have. within herself in South Carolina. Like, like I don't know, just always falling on the wrong side. She should. She should have said, "Well, I was pulling there for it." I, but you can't say we. Why even say that when you have the person that won the championship, that had the perfect season, that is a legendary. Coach, we're gonna well, talk, we're gonna talk about this in, in my next sports yeah, report. Okay, because okay. because I want to yeah. I want I want to replay the audio. I'm gonna elaborate yeah. on that. Yeah, absolutely. And then my quick for free story, y'all, honey. Let's pray. Continue to pray, y'all, for Cheryl Underwood. I don't know if we talked about it, but CBS y'all canceled the daytime chat fest to talk after 15 seasons, and they're gonna replace it, y'all, with a new daytime um, um, soap opera called The Gates, y'all. So let's continue keeping all parties lifted up in prayer. All right, the Cheryl Underwood and them show what the talk. It's canceled, Ricky. It's sad. <laughs> my God. They had a yeah. good run, though, right? They yeah, did. It's 15 seasons, honey. They were on for a good while. So, you know, so con- we just continue to pray. All right. The color today, honey, is one of my favorite colors. My color today, y'all, is Forenza. On the high end, you say Forenza. And on the low end, you say beautiful red. That's your color for today. All right. That's beautiful. Y'all give it up for Gary with the T. <laughs> did you see that post? People are talking. Here's what's trending on the Ricky Smiley Morning Show. All right, 25 minutes after the hour. Uh, Rock T, can we get a weather forecast? Yes, if you're coming into the Ricky Smiley Morning Show studio, expect a light frost, <laughs> possibly blizzard. Uh, precipitation and snow will be below normal, and there's been a polar bear noticed yeah. in the site. What did you turn the air on? What did you go through? Because it was hot. 
when I Bruh, got you going through hot. menopause or no, something? No, I mean, yeah. it was like no, you, it was it was literally. Still, he got the air on. Gary, he got the air on, on fifty three. Got it on I Eskimo. Know. It was at seventy nine when I came in. It was you hot. Must don't have, you, okay, so well, you and your wife ain't got no air at home. What you trying to get all get cold enough to go home exactly. so it can last you till you get back to work? Stock up on air. It's so cold. You put your jacket back on because right. you had it off. If you hot, take your jacket off. Right. We sitting here by the by the we in here talking during the morning show and smoke coming from our mouth. I thought I was having a hot flag. Damn. He was Damn. disrespecting my air. Man. I mean, it's no. like, I would turn it back up. I turn, turn it back up. But why you put the air on That's 53? So we got so a thing rude. to do. Let's talk about the thing we're talking about. Yeah, we're man, talking about we the air now. We can't talk about it. Go get you a blanket. A damn polar bear just walked in here <laughs> talking about some good morning. <laughs> <laughs> What's, what's, what's the weather again, Rock T? Oh, uh, yeah, man. Expecting a light frost, possible blizzard, <laughs> precipitation, and snow will be below normal. Anybody, do not come up to this studio. Get you if you a come blanket. up to the Rick and Smile in the Morning Show, bring a coat, put on some long johns <laughs> or whatever. Uh, we're getting slight uh, uh, snow flurries yeah. because Sleep. Special K is, is, is menopause. <laughs> You're a grown-ass man. You're too old for that. Yeah. All right, y'all. Uh, I apologize, uh, Gary right. and Brett. We, we yeah. just tired. Uh, yeah, it's okay. Yeah. But the temp- what's a fair temperature? 70, 71? Yeah, I'll I put it on 70. Please. I'll put it on 70. Sit right there by the air. You keep clicking the button. Every time you turn around, you keep clicking the button. What you clicking? It's already cold in here. He probably can't use the thermostat at his house, so now he's coming here. <laughs> They ain't got no air. They forbid him. They ain't got no air at home, Gary. Wait a minute, that's what it is. Don't talk about my air. He's trying to get himself real cold so he can go home and thaw out. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but they ain't got no air. Y'all ain't got no air in Decatur. Come on, man. Come on now. Let's talk about the thing. We All right, here we go. Uh, people across the country have reacted to, uh, with a horror uh, with a horror to a video of a middle-aged female being repeatedly punched in the face and abused by a male student. It could not be me because I would be in jail. The teenager has been arrested after a classmate filmed the profanity-laced physical attack at Parkland High School in North uh, in North Salem, North Carolina. Man, it really made me cringe, and I felt so bad watching this video. This teacher sits motionless in the classroom as the student lands a right-handed punch to her cheek before he steps back and demands, want me to hit you again? Listen to how vicious this is, y'all. You want me to hit you again? I don't want it. You want me to hit you again? Ain't nobody here to come and you just got slapped. <laughs> Go back to teaching. Wow. You know, unfortunately, y'all, education professionals are commonly exposed to abuse and violence in their workplace. It has become so common that one in 10 educators will experience an assault in their classroom each year. And what's really sad is that 14 percent of U.S. school educators feel humiliated by the assault so much that they don't share the information with their colleagues. Twelve percent of educators have been traumatized by serious verbal threats and or physical assaults in the past year. Yeah, Jonah, uh, Jonah this morning uh, is an educa- uh, educator in the field who teaches language arts and uh, mentors youth. Uh, my nephew uh, graduated from Alabama State, a uh, member of Kappa Alpha Psi Fraternity Incorporated, Beta Zeta, uh, Delchick Lather. Hey, Delchick, what up? Oh, okay, he's not on yet? The phone line dropped. Yeah. Oh, his phone line dropped? Okay, we're, we're, we're calling him back. But that's that's really sad, man. I absolutely, that was absolutely disturbing. Yeah. Uh, and a lot of teachers going there. How many uh, videos y'all have seen? I wish some teachers. Oh, it's a bunch of them. Yeah. It's yeah. a bunch of videos out there, but that's that's a direct result of We of never would have thought to do your, nothing man, like that. You no, need to put sir. your hands on Aline Avery. And my kids would never, th- would never think to do nothing like that. And I'm sure Rock, t- your kid, Maria, I'm sure none of I our kids would think my kid to hit half. a teacher. Well, you know, there's so many layers. There's so many layers to it. You know, my husband and I were talking about it. There's the other students, the male students who are around, who are watching this happen. You wonder what's happening in the household for a parent child to go out and be this way and then you know teachers um are in a position where if they fight back they can be sued yep. so there's just That's so many layers now i yeah. seen a couple yep. of videos a couple of the male teachers that did fight back and it was a uh, body was, slams yeah, yeah but, but, i, I but can't then, say but i blame them but, but, but they ended up getting fired get, and right, not they working get fired. out for them it ain't fair the it's parents fair. Should, just like them parents just went to jail last week for their son who shot up that school if your child slaps a teacher it should be some consequence for the cu- custodial parent. Well, teachers can't be, they can't discipline a child no more. Like back in the day. That's crazy. Because the kid runs home, tells mom and dad. Mom and dad comes running up to the, to the school, defending mm-hmm. their kid. But that's a, that's a cultural difference from when we were younger, when kids had 
a healthy fear of a of respect the for teachers authority. Are afraid of the principal. The principal's afraid of the superintendent. The superintendent's afraid of the parents, and the kids ain't afraid of nobody. Yeah, and it yeah. is sickening. I wish we used to get paddlings in school. I know that. I know well, that's a time. That's a, that's some well, slave you better, stuff. You better shout well, out. We used to get, you better, we used to get spanked. You in ain't school. had Coach Critton. Coach Come on, Gene Critton and Coach Jones. Oh, well, they sent Mr. Bonner, rest in peace, send you around to Mr. Bonner's office that lived in the neighborhood. He said, I'm going to beat your ass. Took me in the bathroom and paddled me when I was at Hayes High School. And then said, and I'm going to tell your granddaddy, I got another one when I got home. Come on, man. Come, Mr. Bonner knew my granddaddy. Let's go to the phone. We got Deltrick Latham on the phone. Deltrick. Yes, sir. Hey, we talk on the phone at least once a week about this right here. Uh, you are educated. Did you see the video? Uh, with the uh, student assaulting the teacher, and uh, what makes students feel free to assault teachers, and what are some of the the consequences of kids assaulting teachers? Like, what are your thoughts on all of this? I, I think it's I think it's a traumatic situation. Uh, we focus on the child, but we don't focus on the adult. Uh, how the trauma that she's going through, going back to that job, knowing that their that child is still coming back. Most of these children don't have consequences because of IEPs, behavior management program, behavior management plans they are on. And some of these kids, they know that nothing's going to happen to them. They know that their the consequences will be a couple of days at home. They come back and they're still coming back to the classroom. And power. And even if you, yeah, and and that's power. When they when they know when they know that the consequences are very very minimal, and then you know they'll and then they'll uh, they'll ask, okay, what was going on with the teacher? How can you have diffused the situation? Some of these kids are mentally ill. Some of these kids have have emotional damage or emotional situations that lead them to that. They want teachers to be today to be therapists, psychologists, educators, uh, and you know, and sometimes counselors. And even though that's a part of the trade, but no, no, uh, these children they're being they're being conditioned at home. You can't touch them at the school. You can't uh, if you if you you can't even when you're breaking up a fight, you still have to do that in a certain way. But however, when a child assaults a, assaults a teacher, they'll they'll ask the teacher, "Is she okay?" And that's that, and that'll be about it. There's no emotional training. There's no trauma situation that she would go to. There, so I think that we empower kids by by cutting the consequences for their actions. And 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 now kids, they'll they'll assault a teacher and have one of their friends taping it. We- if you saw in the video. He hit the teacher, looked back at the camera, and then went and hit her again. He knew he was being videoed. Right. He wanted De- it to go viral. De- uh, we're talking to Deltrick Latham, uh, graduate of Alabama State University. Uh, uh, so happy to have you this morning. This is my nephew, and I'm so proud of everything that you're doing. What What's some of the issues you see with the parents that, that, that we always talking about on the phone when we just be, like, talk? What, what's some of the issues with the parents? And, and, and what are some of your interactions with parents uh, justifying some of the kids' behavior? Yes, sir. Uh, the parents want to be friends. And in today's society, we don't have real parenting anymore. The parents want to be so cool with the kids that uh, that they that they're that they that they are not even enforcing any type of home training or discipline at the household. So you'll uh, you know, for instance, when we're having a situation with um, with the kids at the school. The parent won't come up to the school about the issue, but if you take their phone, she up there thirty minutes later. So it's almost like it's, it's, it's but they like, won't. But they won't come you, to a PTA meeting. Oh, oh no, sir. We'll have a, 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 a we'll have a school of almost nine hundred and eighteen kids. But our parent, but our parent teacher conferences are no more than 30, 30 parents for the school. Wow. Del Trick, I have a question for you. Um, I want to know a little yes, bit or, or what your thoughts are, are on educators' rights because you would think that they could sue the school district because at the end of the day, that is an unsafe work environment. Um, what are the rights of the educators? Well, the rights of the educator are still are still loopholed into the rights of the kids. If if a child has an IEP or a behavior management a behavior management plan, then that's very little that cuts the hand off of the teacher or the administrator because you have to go through so much paperwork just to get that child out of the school. And even when that child leaves the school, they're only they're only leaving for a certain amount of time before they're about by, by law they have to come back. And when kids see that the child can slap a teacher and he right back at the school a month later or a couple of weeks later, that de- that diminishes the power of the teacher. We got to get to the. 
I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, go ahead. We got to get to the root of the problem. We're talking about the treatment. We're talking Damn about so we're talking about charity the, the starts response to the situation as opposed to getting to the root. It starts at the house. We had it a problem. starts you at the house. Mom and dad didn't die. We Unless had, a kid, our mom and died. Our daddy right. died. We went through so we didn't have nothing. We didn't have social media. We didn't have right. no phone. We didn't have nothing. Correct. We didn't have no food. It goes back to what you say all the time. It's proper home training, and there's no way around it. Nobody wants to accept that accountability for that, but there's no way. Nothing beats proper home training. Nothing. Nothing. And then, then, man, we ain't even. What we be doing on next break? What what we got coming? These kids aren't afraid of anything. Delta, Delta, I know you got class. You have time. We want to go to commercial and come back. You got time? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, well, maybe for about, uh, uh, well, call me back because we're, we're about to do testing. So I stepped outside the classroom for a moment to, uh, to speak with you guys. All right. That's all right. Let us know how you can be reached. We're going to, we're going to continue this tomorrow. Let us know how you can be reached. Yeah. And, and thank you guys for your time. You guys are doing some powerful, uh, po- something powerful right now. And I, I pre- we appreciate it. Yeah, uh, uh, that's Deltrick Latham, uh, uh, Beta Zeta, Kappa Alpha Psi. That's my nephew, graduated from Alabama State, that I am so proud of, and I absolutely love. One of the one of the upstanding men in my family, and I love him. Uh, thank you for coming on. We've been talking about this for weeks, y'all. We're going to be talking about this. We're taking your phone calls. More Rick Smiley the Morning Show coming up. All right, y'all, Rick Smiley the Morning Show, thir- uh, 13 before the top of the hour. Uh, Brian White uh, made a real good point. He said, uh, uh, consider mental health. Parents don't know how to be parents. Uh, they rebuked the teachings of their parents and grandparents and don't know how to be parents. Uh, uh, parents now want to be friends with their kids. Uh, he said, my kids and I aren't friends. We are involved in a relationship that is big on mutual respect. And, uh, and we'll never be friends. And he also said that uh, you can't get punked by a kid in front of the classroom or get hit by a kid and then expect the rest of the kids to have respect for you. You know what I'm saying? And uh, it's, it's like knock their ass out and go find another job. If that's what it takes, prepare yourself because you know what you got. Prepare yourself to find something else or whatever. It, it, it's just absolute. What was that point you was making? The point I was making was that it all goes back to home. It all goes back to home training. Because you're not going to tell me that unless your kid has a serious developmental issue, Rock T has a child that's in what grade is Rocky in? Ninth grade. What's the chances of him slapping a teacher? Zero. Zero point zero. Yeah, and right. People say, well, you can't say what your child won't do. I the can't, hell if I, I can't. can't. I sure can. <laughs> I promise you, Malik. <laughs> come on, man. Come on. I can promise you that. You know what I'm saying? And then it's crazy because then when you try to be a good parent, I had my grandson outside raking leaves when he was about two or three taking out the garbage. Do you know black women came on my live on Facebook and was going in on me for making a three-year-old help rake, help the older kids rake leaves? Well, why is he rake? Why are you undermining? Why are you questioning my decision at, to create a man that's good, that's suitable enough for your granddaughter? And yes, I talk heavy to my kids. I talk heavy to them. I have always talked heavy to them or whatever, and, and I respect them, and they respect me because they know that I love them. They know they're going to get a good meal, roof over their head, right. love and affection, uh, medicine when they're sick, all that kind of stuff. My newest grandbaby seven months old. My wife is already tapping her little knuckles when she scratches or, or, or hits. That's right. You know, just to let her know, hey, hey, you, we don't do that. Setting boundaries. You're not doing that. Small corrections, setting small boundaries and stuff or whatever, but we want to be the kids' friends, and, and we I, I don't I don't understand it. Pastor Keon said it best. You know what I'm saying? Give them what you had. Give them the same. If you successful and, and, and you did well for yourself, give them. The, why not? You don't want to give them the same discipline and structure. Let's go to the phones. Good morning. Well, I'm going to tell you something about that. Um, I feel that that young man there, um, I hate to say it, he's going to see one or two things early. That'll be the uh, jail cell or, or an early grade. And I hate that it's our kids doing that. Yeah, my opinion is that children are out of control, they're disrespectful, and mainly it comes from the parents not correcting these children. In fact, just recently, one of the kids told the um, principal that my wife pushed her, and it never happened. You know, so teachers have to be careful and make sure they're in front of cameras just to protect themselves from these misbehaving and unruly children. I just want to say I'm an educator, and the problem that I have with this whole situation is that when these videos come out, the common response is, I will lose my job, I will lose my job. 
why is it thought that a teacher should have to take abuse and if they defend themselves, they have to fight for their job or you lose their job? But a police officer, a teacher who's actually been hit or assaulted, but a police officer can be hundreds of yards away and just fear for their lives and actually kill somebody and nothing happens. Teachers are not punching bags. We don't go to work for this. And I think that the, the attitude around that needs to change. We are people, and we should be able to defend ourselves if we are attacked by students. Wow. And it's not just our kids. I want to correct that, too. It's not just our kids. It's one of our kids in this case, but it's not just our kids. I see, I see kids across all ethnic backgrounds I don't care doing what this. They do. It's uh-uh, a generational uh-uh, thing. Uh-uh. It's a generational thing. Yeah, our, it's okay. a generational thing. Now, we right. do have a problem in our community with this. Right. But it's not just our kids doing this. But in this case, this is who we're looking at. I don't care. And it's a problem. I don't care what other kids and it's a do. Problem. I'm concerned about our kids. Yeah. I don't care what they do. I don't, I don't even want to start start taking that taking that conversation left. I am zoom, uh, solely focused on our kids and how we get down. I don't care nothing about that. And what we need to that. do to fix it. And what we need to do to because fix it. Because the consequences for our kids are going to be harsher. Absolutely. Now, that, now, that's the part you need to look at. Now, those kids can get away with hitting teachers, cussing out police officers and everything else. Our kids end up dead. Right. Absolutely. Hey, uh, y'all hit us up on, if you couldn't get through, hit us up on rickysmileymorningshow.com. Uh, mix that'll stay in your head all day. Coming up next, Ricky Smiley Morning Show. All right, all right, y'all, Ricky Smiley Morning Show. Listen, y'all lying on the ones and two, chicken and waffle mix going down. We are still having this conversation. Like, it got so, got, got so crazy in the studio. And uh, one of our uh, associate producers on the morning show, said, and I didn't know that you supply a teacher. T- hey, introduce yeah. yourself real quick. I'm Shawnee Scott. I am a substitute teacher sometimes. And what you was just saying just now about the school board. So what I was saying is it's important that you make sure you understand who's on your school board. When they have the vote for that, it's important for you to understand who's running, what they stand for. Do they have kids? Do they have kids that attended that district? How involved are they with the district? Do they just want a title? Because they set all the rules in mm-hmm. place for the schools. So so you feel like they're allowing some of the behavior uh, uh, that's going on with the kids, and therefore the teachers end up getting assaulted and disrespected. Yeah, because if you're in the classroom and the like the, the video with the little boy slapping the teacher, mm-hmm. she she actually did the right thing by sitting there. If If she would have hit him back, then she would be in trouble. I don't understand I get that. that how? But, but again, again, we're we're dealing with the other side of the issue and not the root cause of the issue because the situation should have never happened in the first place. Right. A teacher shouldn't have to be in a position to have to decide how do I react to being slapped. Sh- Shani says mm-hmm. she had 30, uh, uh, 38 30 Latino kids. kids in the classroom trying to do their work, and they bought five of our kids and black kids, and it sounded like what? They were at a football game. They weren't, they weren't working. They didn't want to work. And the thing about it with these kids, and that was at the high school level. At the elementary level, if you have a kid that comes in and maybe they're they're talking um, or they can't stay on task, mm-hmm. the school will say, oh, we need to get him tested or mm-hmm. her tested. And then they put them on medicine. That was an issue at a school I was at. I was like, right. y'all creating drug addicts. I no, got that. They, they just need something that's going to challenge them. You know what, Shawnee? I'm just too old. And I'm too uneducated to <laughs> even process all of this. We used to get our ass beat. Wasn't no, it, 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 I, when you talk, you you act out in class. You was gonna get paddled or swatted every, or something. Sonny, I'm, I'm sorry. I know, like and I know there's room for testing, and I know there's room for every, analyzing everything. Every ass whooping I got, I needed it because I was bad. I, 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 I agree. I was a good person, but I would just, yeah. I would just get my energy folks to get me re, you get redirected by your, ear, and by your collar. I, I, I was I scared of my granddad. I had a healthy fear of my granddad. Yeah. I had a healthy fear of my mother. And there's no discipline and there's no boundaries being set. Yeah. There's no respect. Shani just said kids sit in the room and be cussing when they talking. All they do they that, just, they they do that cuss in the mall. I have this gray hair on my face. Kids are not afraid to cuss in That's front of a crazy. Adult. No. That's something in my generation. Mm-hmm. And we was we wasn't good we wasn't perfect kids. We I acted was. up, but we acted up around each other. That's but right. when adults came around, we knew how to sure Absolutely. Up. All right, y'all. We got Jeff Shani, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you for that. We got Jeff Johnson coming up next. Quick smile of the morning show. Hey, I'm going to tell y'all something. Hold on, stop, 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 stop. Damn that song. We play that song every morning. Play the song about eight times in the last hour. We done heard the song. We'll hear it tomorrow. <laughs> y'all, let, I'm, I'm mad this morning because this is why I get mad. Everything ain't no damn. Oh, 
Oh, oh, oh. You said, Special K said something so deep in here just now. Can I, can I reveal yeah, how you want to yeah. say it? No, go ahead. Let me tell you what Special K said. Everybody listen. Everybody listen to the radio. Please listen to this. This is this is uh, the crux of, of what we're talking about. Special K, Special K just said, and I've been saying this for years. All right. When you go to the dentist to get, and, and you got a toothache, this is just a great analogy. You know what the dentist could do? They could put some polish on the tooth, and then they could put some white coating on the tooth and put a cap on it. Right. But in order to stop your tooth from hurting, it's called a root canal. They have to go all the way down in the tooth to clean out the decay. Come on. Right? And then build the tooth back up. But they right? got to get to the root. But they got to get to the root. And what is the root? At home. Right. It's y'all. It's y'all parents. And, and, and most of them parents that's like that probably don't listen to this morning. So they're probably listening to the hip hop station. Yep. Cause they ain't they damn sure ain't listening to this. The ones with the problem. The, the ones, ones with the problem. problems. Yeah. Me and friend, that's my friend, and I want them. Yes, you want your child to be able to talk to you about anything. But what Delta talked about, my nephew, is a healthy fear. Mm. Healthy fear. That's a great way to explain it. And you know what? And I and you know I know Deltrick. We go back to when we was touring yeah. ten years ago. Yeah. Deltrick, and he's much younger than me. And Deltrick used to even talk to me. With a respectful tone, because even though I'm a comic and we having fun with Deltrick always talked to me in a respectful Special manner K. because Deltrick I'm older is 40. than him. Deltrick is 40 and has a family and still refer to me as yes, sir. Yeah. He said, yes, sir. Exactly. Yes, sir. Because he was raised right. Yes, sir. Every time I'm talking to him about anything, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, when you implement that healthy fear into your kids, like, look. I'm I'm a happy dad. Right. Crystal is a happy mom. Our family and, and our home is always a lot of happy energy. We Playing clown and around, laughing. We play around. But our kids know. Yeah, when I believe it. Oh, our kids know. When, oh, okay, all that playing, push that to the side. They know when they see a certain look, a certain energy in the room or whatever, mm-hmm. that's that healthy fear. They know when Absolutely. mom and dad is serious. Get it together. Absolutely. Jeff, good morning, man. Hey, what's we, up, y'all? We've been going in, man. Uh, everybody's uh, upset. I've been listening. Yeah, yeah. Tell us your thoughts, Jeff. You, I mean, I, I don't want to disturb what, what you had. No, no, it's all good, man. Listen, I don't, I don't want to, I don't, I don't want to wreck the flow. I mean, I, I, I agree with a lot of what you all have been saying. I mean, I think that there's, th- th- there is a communal reality to this, which is about as you saw more and more breakdown of institutions. You saw more and more kids. It was just around kids. They weren't around grandparents. They weren't at churches. They weren't in institutions. There was an opportunity for them to have intergenerational interaction, which showed a level of respect. You had elders that started being afraid of babies. Hmm. Um, And so as opposed to Big Mama and Auntie and them coming out in the street talking to them kids, they said, to hell with that, because these babies shooting. And so we've just had so much breakdown in the community of generational structure because parents never raised their kids by themselves. Y'all know y'all know people who whose parents tried to strike a healthy dose of fear, but it was Big Mama who had to do it, or Auntie So and So had to do it, or Miss So and So had to do it, because we didn't raise kids by ourselves. And somewhere, somebody told somebody that a parent is supposed to know everything and don't take advice from nobody else and doesn't create a village. I never forget a brother telling me once. Um, I mean, I was in a really really tight place with my with my oldest kids, and I was I mean I was struggling and. His brother did me a favor um, by making a way for me, and he said, and, and I was like incredibly thankful. And he was like, Jeff, listen, our kids are the sum total of the adults who invest in them. Mm. And for us to, to always just go back to just the home, all of us didn't just get raised by our parents. Right. Miss, Mrs. Scott and, and, and there was Mr. ushers Smith in the church and, that would yoke you up. Yeah. Yes. If you was acting and up so, in vacation Bible so, school and your mama wasn't around. Right. And, and, and parents who just was worn out. Because it's like when you're doing it by yourself and you have no support, you got parents who just get exhausted by the time their kids are a are, are, are certain age. And so I'm not justifying it. I'm agreeing with what y'all are saying. But to think that parents do this thing by themselves, I don't know any parent who has raised kids that act like they got some sense that did it all by themselves. There was a village of some kind. And so it, similarly, when you start talking about the root, I really appreciate what the sister said earlier about – we have one of the most antiquated education systems in the world. And so even how our babies show up to school is antiquated. What they're teaching, how they're learning, we don't pay teachers. And as a result, 
We don't always get the best teachers. I applaud every single person that's willing to go into a classroom. But but if we're honest, we don't even we don't even create the kind of investment or pay teachers. We have we have political nonsense that gets in the way of real reform. Um, and we've organized our schools in a way that they were organized when people were still working um, uh, agrarian and, and agricultural um, more than they were industrial. It, 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 it's insane to me that we haven't um, seen a level of reform in our education system, but still want to talk about we are a first world nation. And so it's a lot. It's, it's not one thing. There's layers to it. Um, and, and, and I think that there is a way that it gets better. We see models that work. Um, but, but part of it too, is we got to provide parents with support the same way we provide children with support. Um, and, and whether that's through the schools themselves or through churches, or through organizations. Um, but I love the idea of how many people actually even go to a school board meeting, let alone think about running for the school board. And, and it's more than a notion. There are teachers who are on the school board. that are like, I didn't realize how much they do. Because operating a school system is not the same as being an educator. So even if you're an educator, it doesn't mean you understand all the aspects of what it takes to run a school system, what you need in a school building, what principals need, what teachers need. Um, are you providing um, educational support to the teachers? I mean, there's just a lot. So yeah. I, I think that there's a lot of opportunities there, but we gotta we got to be on it because that video um, and, and that teacher having to withstand – what is literally abuse is inexcusable on every level. And if yeah. we don't think that that's a crisis and the numbers that you all talked about, I don't know what the hell is. Jeff, we got to get back to the basics. We got to get back to the basics because it worked well. Look at you. Look at you. Look at Rock T. Look at Special K. Look at, look at Brett. Brett talked about her granny all the time and, and how and, and the, the, the healthy fear. I had I had Miss Garrett on one side. Uh, uh, Mr. Miss Lockhart across the street, Mr. Merchant, Mr. Miss Merchant behind us, and then Miss Gertrude, and Mr. Thompson next door. I had a lot of people to answer to. Oh, yeah. listen, man. You go across Ms. the street, Nina and my Roseberry, granddaddy, who was my se- Miss Nina Roseberry, yeah. who was my seventh grade teacher at Wiley Middle School. I was more afraid of her than my parents. Right. <laughs> like you, you just did not play with Nina Roseberry. But I wasn't just. A, but here's the thing: I wasn't just afraid of her. She poured into me more than any other Absolutely. teacher. Absolutely. But and sometimes so they that, have to get you that. afraid of them so they can pour into you. You see what I'm yeah, saying? But, 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 but we don't want to shake up nothing. And, and we so worried about the kids and, and their feelings and, and all of that stuff. Sometimes, man, you got to you got to tear them down in order to build them back up the mm-hmm. right way so they Jeff. would listen to you. You know what I'm saying? Jeff, let everybody know how you could be reached. Y'all, y'all hit me at Jeff's Nation. I appreciate being able to be part of the conversation. I love y'all. Have a good rest of your Thursday. Oh, man, we love you too, y'all. More Rick's Mind the Morning Show coming up. Smiley Morning Show. All right, y'all, Rick Morning Show. Hey, listen, um, um, Maria, I know you got your front page, but uh, uh, thank everybody who participated in the conversation. And uh, uh, we are serious when it just comes to uh, 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 home training uh, for kids and setting boundaries for kids because we want all of our teachers that work really, really hard, we want them to feel safe. We want everybody to go to work. We don't want nobody to go to work feeling threatened. And, and stuff and got to put up with this with, with this kind of stuff uh and one day we're going to talk about just kids just in general how you can't go to a football game you can't go to a basketball game you can't go to the mall mm-hmm. on a saturday saturdays you go to the mall you can enjoy yourself man this uh generation of, of don't know how to act fighting shooting and everything else it gets deeper than the school it's just the, just just what's going on kids can't even wear jordans no more because they're getting jacked for their jays that's crazy that's crazy. Uh, so, uh, you know, just uh, we're going to stay on and we're going to continue this conversation. Maria, good morning. Good morning, Ricky. Good morning, our SMS family. Here's what's happening in news. Well, the Justice Department is ramping efforts to reduce violent c- crime in the U.S., launching a specialized gun intelligence center in Chicago and expanding task forces to curb carjackings. Now, the initiatives are part of a broad effort by President Joe Biden's administration to address violent crime, an issue that Democratic President has featured in his reelection campaign to reach young voters concerned about gun violence. In other news, Kraft Heinz is facing a class action lawsuit which claims their Lunchables are basically a scrap yard for metals that end up in the mouths of kids everywhere. In the docks obtained by TMZ, a female plaintiff 
uh, accuses Kraft of misleading consumers with false advertising. Now, she claims they failed to mention the kits contained harmful levels of lead and other chemicals typically used to make plastic more durable. A spokesperson for Kraft tells TMZ, our products are safe for consumers and we were we will vigorously defend our brand. I'm Maria Moore, and that's a quick look at news. For updates and other headlines, visit rickysmileymorningshow.com. Rock T, what you got in sports? Man, breaking news. Toronto Raptor Jonte Porter has just been banned from the NBA for life, betting on his own team to lose games, but also manipulating his play to tip the scale to his favor. Now, he's... As of right now, after the investigation, bet it on 13 games. Now, he gambled $21,965. His NBA salary is $2.8 million. Do the math, special, okay? <laughs> yeah, that math don't math. That math don't add up. His Come math on. teacher need to be need to be reprimanded. You ain't learned from Pete Rose? Like, Come how, on, man. How dumb can you be? Real quick, Gail King interviewed the great Don Staley after winning the Women's NCAA Basketball Championship. And these are the words that Gail said to Don Staley. Happy for you guys, Coach Staley. I'm so happy. The game was such a good game. It was so close at times. And in the end, you guys pulled it out. But was there ever a point during the game when you were worried? Because I got worried. We, we were all cheering for Iowa, of course, and Caitlin Clark. But for so many people, you've got their hearts. Was there ever a point where you were worried during how, the game? How out of touch is she? Very. Not first the Kobe Bryant interview, now this. Yeah. What is, what, who, who is we? You who got you? Dawn Staley on the Who are you the, talking about? You interviewing Dawn. You're who looking you, at her in her face. You're not You're not in the studio talking amongst your peers. You're right. interviewing Dawn. He said, we cheering for our, who? <laughs> you and Oprah? <laughs> who? What did she check with? Oh, man. Oh, my God. That's your girl. And I was going to try to talk to Gail King. <laughs> <laughs> Just because she, that's the best, that's the closest to Kelly Rowland, old, that's older I could get. Yeah. But I'm, I'm good. I'm good. I'm turned off. Hey, man, Plus, Kelly they canceled uh, her and Charles Barkley, so I ain't going to be able to do it. <laughs> <laughs> Drop it like it's hot. Drop it like it's hot. So hot, yeah. Hot. You can catch me at the hot spot. It's the B-R-A-T. All right, y'all. Rick's Smiley Morning Show. Hey, man, this is being brought to you by the Ricky Smiley Birthday Beach Blowout, August the 9th through the 11th in Hollywood, Florida. Convenient to both. Fort Lauderdale and Miami airports. Y'all make sure y'all need to be making y'all way to the Diplomat Beach Resort. Uh, Four Diamond rated by AAA. Relaxation, celebration, inspiration, live music, pool parties, barbecue, uh, uh, Greek stroll, I'm talking about, and much more. It's going to be a great time. Make sure y'all go to Ricky Smiley at BBB. No, not at RickySmileyBBB.com. Ricky Smiley, BBB.com. It's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, What up, Brett? What up, Ricky? Good morning, everybody. I'm your girl, Brad Tat Tat, and this is the hot spot where we bring you music and more and movies. But let me just let y'all know that last night it was Queen Night on The Masked Singer this week, and unfortunately, elimination was real life for two contestants. It marked the second double elimination of the season, but it also crowned Group A victor. Now, to kick off the episode, the three singers remaining in Group A put on a group performance of We Are the Champions, but it was the starfish and ugly sweater that got sent home making the goldfish the group a victor and who was the starfish costume you ask well fans weren't exactly surprised to see the office star kate flannery the mass singer airs wednesdays at 8 p.m on fox meanwhile y'all kenneth petty will be allowed that's Nicki minaj's husband he will be allowed to travel on the international leg of her pink friday 2 world tour after all uh, he was uh, currently on probation and house arrest and asked the judge for permission to travel out of town, uh, out of the country for his wife for various purposes, including child care. At first, this had no position uh, from the judge. However, a judge greenlit Patty's request. So I'm happy for him that he gets to go help uh, with their child. I think that's important, you know, that she has him out there to help her. All right, y'all, we're going to wrap up the hot spot on that note, but coming up next, we got the praise mix down. The time now is 26 minutes before the top of the hour. It's the Ricky Smiley Morning Show.